Hello, thank you for joining us. My name is Andy Valilla, and I am with Securonics. And we are here at RSA 2020, and I'm pleased to be joined by a member of Securonics's board of directors and former deputy director of the NSA, Mr. Chris Inglis. Thanks, Andy. It's a pleasure to be with you. Thank you, Chris. Chris, what brings you out to RSA this year? Well, this year, I'm actually here in a speaking role. So the uh, U.S. Cyberspace Solarium Commission that I'm on, one of 14 commissioners, has been charged by law to determine a strategy for the United States in cyber. Um, it covers all the instruments of power, whether they be private sector or public sector, across the continuum of defense to offense. And so we're going to, tomorrow afternoon, the second day of the RSA conference, have an initial panel where we begin to roll out those results. I'm also here because I'm a six-year board member of Securonix, and it's, uh, it's an annual um, tradition for me to come out and to reacquaint myself deeply with the customers and the nature of the innovation Securonix is about. And so it's been a great day to do some of that, too. Oh, that's wonderful. The six years you spent with Securonix, how have you seen the cybersecurity landscape evolve over that time? Um, it's been a royal, right? So you uh, might, might not be surprised that while there's been a lot of innovation and certainly a lot of players in this space, few of them have survived to take that innovation and to apply that with the execution that companies like Securonix and a few others have. Um, when I was first recruited by Securonix to have a relationship, it was just after I'd left the National Security Agency. I didn't really have a good sense of what the security landscape was in terms of all the individual companies. Certainly was not familiar with um, all of the companies where innovation flourishes. They tend to be smaller. They tend to be in, in corners. And so I had no prior um, experience with Securonix. I was attracted to them because of the audacity of their vision. That's the word I use then. It's the word I use now. Um, by the innovative nature of the technology they brought to bear. And they were trying to solve a problem that I had just had real and material experience with, the insider problem. Um, all of those made it such that I thought it was a great relationship to start with. And it turns out I've never moved on to anything else. I've done some other things, but no other relationship has been for me as long and fruitful as my relationship with Securonix. I know you serve on other corporate boards, and you provide a lot of advice to security practitioners in the field. So if you could provide some advice on this during this session, what would you say to them? Um, several things. First, uh, I always start with a description of what cyber is. Um, you know, it's, it's a noun to some, it's a verb to some, it's an expletive to others. Uh, but I always start with a description in my own words of what I think cyber is. And in, and in the noun um, kind of component of that, it's a meld of technology and people and, and what I would describe as doctrine, but really you know, what the roles and responsibilities are. Um, and, and adversaries who want to take advantage of you using cyber, the noun, when they exercise the verb, they're taking advantage of weaknesses in all three of those. Sometimes they take advantage of a weakness you have and not having thought about who does what within your enterprise. Um, there's a gap there. Sometimes they take advantage of a human being who makes a mistake or might be a little bit complacent. And, and much, much more seldom they take advantage of some flaw in your technology. Um, those are less frequent. They're still there, but they're less frequently found than they used to be. It's the meld of all three of those. And if you understand that that's what cyber is, then you don't simply delegate that off to a crowd of well-intentioned technologists. You have to consider that this is a business issue. So the second thing that I describe cyber as, it's an operational issue, not a delegable commodity. And it therefore must be something that the board embraces and says we have a responsibility to understand how this is done at our company. Um, that they need to properly empower not just the technologist, but everybody who's running operations, because the risks are often taken by the operators. Um, they're often mitigated poorly um, by the various stovepipes that live within um, the extended operations. And so you need to think of this holistically as an operational issue first, um, never a delegable function. And, and ultimately, when you parse it out to the various pieces of your stovepipes, be that operations or technology or human resources, you need to figure out how do you continue to stitch that together. And at the end of the day, the company that's going to prevail in this space is the company that thinks of this as a living, breathing organism um, that they will set up such that it might be defended, that they actually take pains to defend, that's a human endeavor, and that they essentially on a continuous basis are embracing and using all the instruments of power within the company to essentially address this space. Um, there are a few companies out there who think of it that way, um, but there aren't enough. Right. Well, we appreciate over the past six years having the ability to share in your vision and the advice and expertise you provided Securonics. 
as well as many in the cybersecurity world. And thank you again for joining us. Well, the six years have been a pleasure. I must say that I'm certainly a little bit older. I hope I'm a little bit wiser. Um, and, and in that regard, I have to give Securonix uh, full and fair credit. So it's been a pleasure. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. I'm Andy Valilla for Securonix. Thanks again for joining us today.